हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर विजय प्रकाश एंड टुडे आई एल बी टेलिंग यू अबाउट एंटीज लॉ नाउ व्हाट इज एन एंटीज लॉ इट वाज प्रपोज बाय आई एच एन टी इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी व्हेन ही पब्लिश्ड पेपर ऑन फंडामेंटल्स प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ अपार्टमेंटी सो दैट वाज इन 1926 अकॉर्डिंग टू हिज स्टेटमेंट ही मेड दैट द अपार्टमेंट टी शुड हैव अ कंबाइंड पेरिसमेंटल एरिया equal or greater than the tooth or teeth to be replaced now he meant that the perisemental area of the abutment teeth should be equal or should be more than the tooth to be replaced so this statement was referred by uh, by j f johnston in 1971 as ant's law that's how this law came came into being now why is ant's law so important because ant's law is used as a clinical guideline to plan treatment in fixed prosthodontics so it it helps in evaluating the abutment teeth and accordingly take a decision that how many abutment teeth we require for a particular support Uh, for that particular partial denture of course larger tooth uh, will provide a greater surface area and will be in a position to bear the functional forces better than the smaller teeth with lesser surface area now um, in 1963 a jepson gave the root surface area of all the maxillary and mandibular teeth now according to him he found that the uh, maxillary first molar had a combined perisemental area that is the average area of around 433 mm square and this was followed by uh, maxillary second molar which was 431 mm square that was the average uh, root surface area and also the mandibular first molar also had the similar 431 mm square of root surface area and if we talk about the anterior teeth then maxillary canines they had the root surface area of 273 mm square um, which was followed by the mandibular canine which was 268 mm square and if we see the least uh, average root surface area of a tooth then it was the lower uh, central incisor that was only 154 mm square now these are average root surface area readings which are given by a jepson so it may not be relevant for all the clinical situations now one thing which was very important here was the crown to root ratio now if we see the crown to root ratio now for an ant's law to be applicable it should be minimum 1 is to 1 or more than that then only it will satisfy the ant's law otherwise uh, it will it it cannot be used now whenever we are selecting the abutment teeth they should be carefully selected uh, and we need to see what are the location of that uh, what is the occlusion the opposing occlusion its angulation the bone support and very important the periodontal status of a particular abutment teeth before we decide that we need to take this as an abutment teeth for fixed dental processes now there are various clinical uh, situations in which ant's law may require modification now let, let's look at uh, those clinical situation in which uh, ant's law needs modification now if we see a situation a clinical situation when there is bone loss from periodontal diseases like you can see in the figure that there is considerable amount of bone loss uh, and uh, uh, the reason for that is the periodontal diseases now in such a situation what we need to do is we increase the number of abutment teeth which are used for support suppose in uh, where you are having a good periodontal support you will only require uh, say a premolar and a molar for supporting Uh, uh and replacing a single uh, mandibular molar but if you have a reduced uh, periodontal support or there is bone loss then you need an additional uh, abutment teeth for support 
Another clinical situation can be where you having a mesial or distal tipping or there is changes in uh, axial angulation. There could be a mesial tilting of this tooth or you can have a distal tilting of these teeth. So, so it may so happen that uh, in these cases also you will require an increased number of apartment which are which are used for support because in those cases there might be um, some kind of bone loss in that abutment tooth. Also you may have a clinical situation when there is a migratory movement of the abutment teeth. Suppose this tooth moves in bodily it moves and comes here and this tooth also bodily moves. So the amount of space between the two teeth will be reduced. So what we are going to do in such a situation? In this situation, we have to reduce the number of abutment. So in this, this situation, even if you are having a bone loss, you need not take an extra abutment. With this uh, abutment only, it will be sufficient to provide um, adequate support and that will be able to bear the functional forces. Another clinical situation which you may encounter is when you have the opposing occlusion which is less favorable that is it may so happen that uh, the patient has not undergone replacement of uh, that particular tooth so there is supra eruption of the other uh, opposing tooth and that has disturbed uh, the occlusion the plane of occlusion and there are unfavorable forces onto this so in those cases one is you need to correct the plane that is the uh, opposing uh, tooth you need to correct the plane of that and, and also you need to increase the number of abutment uh, which will be needed for the support. You may also encounter a clinical situation where you are having endodontally treated abutment teeth uh, and uh, there may be root resection uh, which have been uh, done for preservation of the teeth. So in those cases also you need to increase the number of abutments which are needed for support. Also in a situation where you are having uh, teeth mobility which may be created after the osseous surgery. So in those cases if you increase the number of abutment you are basically providing a splinting effect on the, uh, the fixed processes. So that will be better. If you leave them individually then chances are that mobility will increase uh, in the period of time. Apart from this, you may have a clinical situation where you are having a uh, arch form situation which, which has a greater leverage forces uh, onto the particular abutment teeth. Now in those situations, of course, you need to correct the opposing occlusion, the plane of occlusion and also you will require to increase the number of abutment which are uh, used for support. So all these are modifications um, to NT's law. Uh, whenever you, whenever there is a clinical situation which demands that and uh, accordingly you need to take a call and modify and see that you have the best result and which provides longevity to your fixed dental processes. So with this we come to end of uh, NT's law. Thank you for watching the video.